in Boston, I decided to start the Dice Cream magazine. New York is is all about art. Like, this is what why I like this world of opportunities because you really never know what is going to happen with you. Then, yeah. let's start a gallery. <laughs> what? Okay, let's do yeah, it. Let's and after exhibition, like three days, no calls, no <laughs> Daria, <laughs> no Irina, nothing. Just don't call me. <laughs> and it it it's actually helped. It's it's called Art Discovery. We are doing art research and analysis of uh, unknown art pieces. Yeah. And we do a chemical research. You are uh, in your laboratory and then you are just going home like, oh, what just happened? So probably <laughs> this could be Da Vinci or <laughs> like, oh, well, was always on the art. Um, artist side and I'm like let's just show and then, no let's sell it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when I'm going to my lovely uh, metropolitan museum mm -hmm. I see more dust than you <laughs> than I used to see before <laughs> maybe you are very talented but you have to be organized as well <laughs> you have to organize your talent <laughs> or you can just ask and there is a lot of people and me as well who can help you Hi, this is She Did It Show and I'm your host, Daria Mudrova. I'm so pleased and happy to introduce you our today's guest, Irina Chistikina. Irina, she's art curator, art advisor and expert of attribution fine arts. Previously, she was working as photographer with such brands as Vice, some commercial companies and some startups as Fasten and New York Fashion Weeks, so lots of amazing projects. And her fashion photography was featured in such magazines as Vogue, Bureau 24-7, Sean, and many other media outlets. Today, she's co-founder and curator of Orchard Gallery and creator of art online magazine Dice Cream. Also, she's completing her master's degree in art business at St. Petersburg Stiglitz State Academy of Design and Art. And also, she's working as fine imaging specialist at Art Discovery Company. And I'm so happy to see you today, Irina, in our studio. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm so excited about our conversation because also we have with you some background working together yeah. and Orchard Gallery on our project. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love to speak with you today about that, about our entrepreneurship experience. Also, you did create uh, some sessions uh, for review CV reviews and yeah. resume reviews of I artists, do. maybe. I still do it. Yeah. yeah, so we'll talk about that definitely. And about contemporary art market and seeing what's going on today. And maybe, yeah, I'm sure it will be so interesting. Hope it will so. Be a fun conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Should be, yes. of course. Thank you for having me, and I'm proud that I'm here because <laughs> yeah, uh, it's so finally. nice. <laughs> and I'm very nervous. <laughs> no, don't no, worry. Yeah. So everything, yeah. Let's, let's just start with your. Okay. Uh, how did you end up where you are today? About your background, where you're from, and what did you do, study, worked on before in Russia? Yeah. Just a little short introduction. So I was born in Kislovodsk. It's a small city on the south in the south of Russia. Um, and uh, after school, I decided that I have to go somewhere because Kislovodsk is a very, very wonderful, perfect, I think, city but not for me <laughs> just because i always wanted to have this experience with some big cities where you can um, learn more exp 
uh, kind of like find yourself probably because uh, Kislovos is quite it's quite small and it doesn't have any op much opportunities, especially in the art field. So I moved to another city, which was not like so small. Yeah, not so small, but it, it still it was not Moscow or Saint Petersburg. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but still there, I um, start to work as a photographer. So in Krasnodar. In Krasnodar, I yes, in Krasnodar. Yeah. Um, I start to work as a photographer and my specialty was I was literally like looking into fashion um, and it was my mm, idea I liked it so much and um, I think I couldn't imagine being a photographer in such a different field uh, even I tried to but fashion was a really nice yeah, yeah opportunity to create something and to be somehow an artist and at the same time uh, in a commercial like field. So which projects did you work on as a photographer? Uh, so I worked with the local magazines and uh, I just did my for the local stores as well um, and um, I've been published in those magazines and also um, I applied with my own projects as a freelancer to different magazines in Europe, in US, and I was published there. And um, in it, it was right before 2014 when I think I got my first crisis in life. Because okay. <laughs> I was thinking that I have to move somewhere else again. So Krasnodar was completely kind of like filled <laughs> With, um, so you can accomplish everything you want yes, there, there, and you want to see yeah, try something. It, it was. It was. You know, when when you so we had there the really cool um, store. It was a like a high high fashion there, like a heavy um, luxury store. I think we still have. They still have it. And when I completed the photo session for them, I like what else what what uh, can i do more for them and i decided to move to moscow but unfortunately <laughs> or maybe a lucky me so uh, you never know i moved to boston wow yeah to united states oh uh, not out of nowhere so what <laughs> did what did you brought to boston what did you bring to boston um, so um my friends and my partner um they decided to open a business there. It was a startup, Fasten. Um, they were trying to fight with Uber and Lyft. And um, I came with them. I, I worked there um, with a production team. So I made for them, I created for them photo session, for advertise. I did advertising, I did the content, um, and everything what, like, what you can see while you're walking around. <laughs> so actually, you yeah. did the same as you did in Russia, but you did it here for the startup company. Yes. Yeah. 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 And um, after three years, this company, we, we at that time we had, um, uh, so we moved to 2015 and um, we opened another city, Boston and Austin, we covered it. But after three like years, of that no, we house? just opened another s another city. We start uh -huh. there, so we were growing, um, and um, in 2018, we actually successful sell the company to Russia and close the branch here because it was a much bigger opportunity for the startup, actually, for to make money. So, so the, the startup is supposed to make money, of course. Yeah. Yeah, so the uh, company was sold and everybody left and only me <laughs> who decided to stay in States and um, I moved to New York. Wow, Yeah, that's just such a quick transition, right? Like, I mean, from yeah. Crescentor, Boston, like three years actually been living yeah. there and then New York City. Three years in Boston and then New York City. And you yeah. sold the company and the company, I just want to mention, it's like the uber like the same concept, yes, right? yes yes it's a right sharing company yeah. yeah and you sold it and you got your 
I mean, not me, not me, but the, the, the company, company was yeah. sold yeah, uh, by owners. And um, yeah, they just left because they had this new opportunity to, s this to put the startup in Russia and start to work there. Um, How and did you make this decision? Was it complicated, like by yourself to move? Just to nowhere, right? To like Boston or to, to, to New York? To both, actually. Mm. I mean, what super was the challenge? Super scary, super scary, because you are um, you kind of like start over and you are kind of like... From zero. Yeah, and you actually, you are living so much there, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think the most, mm, the most wonderful, um, thing that I have, <laughs> I like adventures. So that's probably was um, the second part of moving somewhere um, I instead of, you know, like crazy, <laughs> scary things, yeah, to, to do something like that. Yeah, and so actually you decided to move to New York City and yeah. when did you start to be interested in visual arts? Uh, that happened already in Boston that you started to do some Dice Queer magazine. Mm. So actually, this uh, I started to explore art, I guess, when I was a kid. So it was just a curiosity. I had a lot of um, encyclopedias. I have a lot of catalogs from museums. Then even when I lived in Russia, I traveled to Moscow, to St. Petersburg, to, some, like, on, to see some huge um, exhibitions like a performer or um, anything else. So it was uh, it, it was really like Biennale or something like that. No, we don't the have arts. the Biennale, but we do have a lot of the affairs and um, some some specific exhi exhibitions uh, were there at the same t at that time. And I always traveled there to just see so that's it there is no goal it was just a passion so i do love art for my whole life and um, in boston i decided that um, i'm gonna a bit study more because i already knew something uh, because of l just reading books and um in boston i decided to start the dice cream magazine it's i started it from a uh, telegram channel uh, just to explain people and for myself as well about the contemporary artists who are now existed, who is working, who is selling their art. And um, that's how I st started to learn art market. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So it was just, uh, you know, it wasn't an idea to let's create another magazine. No, it was just a, like a hobby, right? So actually, mm, yeah, kind of hobby. So th it was just a hobby to just I, I, I would like to actually at that time, I would like to um, see what I know and what I do not know. So and this magazine was created for first you, for, for me, yourself, for yeah, like for self education, yeah, right? for self education, yeah. yeah. And uh, I actually, um, actually did the did it f to to learn more, so just to explore more. So this is was the goal to see yeah, what. Why I you know. didn't stay in Boston? Like, why did you decide to move in New York and to pursue your oh. art career here? Boston is very nice city. Uh, there is a lot of wonderful museums but um new york is is all about art i guess you i can just the, the people are around you are they are they're super creative yes. you never know what what's gonna be here and ev actually boston is nice but um, it, that there is not much happening there in the art like field view it has more academical vibe yeah. not like artistic vibe yeah, yeah it like is it is so that's why i think uh, everything starts here you know <laughs> <Everything> <laughs> so yeah in new, in new york so that's why um it was um kind of like an idea and i actually i was pretty familiar already with new york i had here my friend already and um uh, she was very supportive like yeah that yeah. would be so cool and I really I traveled a lot to New York and I never skip 
like to visit the museum, the opportunity to skip it. So just I was always first time you are from train from Boston, you're going to Metropolitan or to Chelsea to see something new. So yeah. And New York Fashion Week actually yeah. I saw so many photography from New York Fashion yeah. Week did here, yeah. right? Yeah. With Anna Winter, like and street style photography. Yeah. Just so oh it's it yeah, it was super fun. I think New York Fashion Week it's for me it's kinda like it's new actually year. happening now. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, a yeah, new year for all Today is just the first day, I guess. Yes. Yeah. And art uh, actually art week is like also is happening like or something. a bit later. A bit yeah, like it's, yeah. bit it's like later. very busy beginning. Yeah, of this yeah. So I think it just season just started. So it season started yeah. Yeah, for everyone. <laughs> so Usu usually yeah. it is so because it's gonna end uh, in December, but in Miami, so not Basel. Yes. So, but for for United States, I think it just started. But no, we have a freeze, right? We have freeze, freeze in May. In like May. Like yeah, it's May. like May the very busy period, and then yeah. like fall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I actually decided to move to New York and to pursue your art career here, right? Yeah. And I actually want to, yeah, like a little introduction. We actually also started to met with you. Yeah, that's what actually I was as was asking to ask you. Was thinking to ask <laughs> you because um, we met in the museum. Right. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah, was uh, Chile. No, it, yeah, it was a um, Med Brewer. Med Brewer. Yeah, yeah. where Egan Schiele was ex explored with 100, I guess, and 80 pieces of selfie <laughs> by himself. Yeah, painted by himself. So a drawing, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did a lot of drawing as well. Yeah. So yeah, there we met. Yeah. And we met with you, and that period of time, actually, yeah. I uh, had an idea to start uh, art gallery. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I had an investor, I had an idea, website, but I needed a person who will be good in arts, like from the artistic side, to, mm -hmm. be, to be art curator. And I was so happy that we, we just met like at the right time when uh, yeah, I agree. We, we just like met and we started our Orchard Gallery project with you. Yeah. And uh, it oh, was that amazing. was that was excited. Actually, I th th this is what why I like this world of opportunities, because you really never know what is going to happen with you. I was just invited some of my friends to see their art exhibit. Like art, art, yeah. art exhibition in the museum, and then yeah. let's start a gallery. <laughs> what? Okay, let's do it. Yeah, let's start. <laughs> like, yeah, it was interesting yeah, challenge not? and adventure. And actually, speaking about Orchard Gallery, right? Uh, yeah. We did with you like during like one couple years actually. No, one actually, year. it was two one year. One year was very active, yeah. yeah. First, uh, I believe our first half a year we were just you know touching <laughs> around and looking <laughs> around, <laughs> yeah, ex ex exploring around exploring, and yeah. see what's going to happen. But I was actually, yeah, happy that we did a good kind of like c common feelings that we're doing all right. And then we, yeah, we started to do our first exhibition was, I think, after half a year when we just started. Yeah, we like actually we did five exhibitions with you. We participated yeah. in uh, art, fair. art fair, Clio yeah. art fair. We did charity events yeah. for yeah for the good cause, yeah. and we actually sold lots of artworks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Uh, you, you know, I wanted to speak with you. Actually, that's an interesting topic because in our case, we became friends during we've been doing business. Really, yeah. we just met with you. Like sometimes it happens. Like people have been friends and they decided to do business and. Sometimes they're case. doing business, being friends, and then yeah, yeah, and then, <laughs> <run off>. <laughs> <laughs> and then not. But it actually, we, uh, I really uh, love that fact that we created this project. We created like our friendships based like on common interests and uh, being immigrants here as mm -hmm. well, right? We have lots of friends, and we've been managing together successfully Orchard Gallery. And we, we have friends now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> still. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you yeah. think, like, um, what did you learn from that experience doing business uh, here? You know, I think the one, one of the wonderful things what happened with us and why we were really uh, actually successful uh, during when w we had the space in Lower East Side with our gallery. So it was because we 
both had the experience as a freelancer in a different types of projects. So you ran your own business, you did some freelance um, jobs on the side, you were also a creative person, and always is me. I've never worked somewhere, I've never worked in a company, so I was just maybe advisor or maybe I did some creative um, like photo shoots, yeah, fo photo shoots so yeah, but right? I've never worked there so I was always in this you know position when you have to do something like all in the, the startup, time yeah. like working in startups yeah, it's, a yeah it's it's very always like kind of not not crazy but it's stressful it's very stressful so um, and I what I learned from there and what I I think you learned as well. And what we brought to our project is that we just decided that every w we trust each other, and we are not cross, you know, kind of like cr cross crossing our paths there. So you are you de you you uh, deal with finance and legal um, stuff and part. yeah business part and the website and I'm doing artists and you trust me in my field I trust you so this was one of the most amazing parts and at the same time we, we were we kind of like I think it was in the second meeting with you because we decided that what we're doing what mm -hmm. our goals and um, what our fields but at the same time we um, we kind of like uh, were you know, so I could c count on you. If I, I'm like failing, like, oh, Daria, yeah. I need your help, please. <laughs> and you were right there at the same time as me, so for you, so yeah. I know maybe it's my opinion what, <laughs> what yeah, yours. Yeah, actually, I love the fact that we, actually right away we created like, uh, we shared like Google Docs, created Excel tables, we wrote all the tasks, yeah. what we should complete, what we should do, yeah. and that was very helpful in the beginning. And then we like, kind of like picked up that from there and we like continuing doing that. But yeah. also, I feel that it's really important and like working previously, like like all the processes were very fast. We trusted each other, we didn't check after each other. Like I knew yeah. that if uh, like you do this thing, you, you will complete it. And uh, yeah, and if something happens, I can help you, you can help me anytime. And it and was stressful sometimes though, like we had crazy <laughs> schedules. Yeah. We like we prepared events like f for a couple of weeks sometimes. Like we didn't have what do you think, where does it come from? Why um, people who barely know each other just decided to trust themselves? <laughs> like, m and not only themselves, but on in a tr like... Actually, yeah. I feel like actually we just spoke also with Nadia, a uh, previous guest, like about working with friends, yeah, that it's just like you feel it's like a chemistry like in the beginning mm -hmm. you just feel like that you can work with this person it's just like hard to explain <laughs> yeah but yeah, this is uh, yeah i mean also there are like of course it can be dangerous while working with friends right because if something goes wrong you can like ruin the relations as well not only the business if something goes wrong right and i think what we found useful in our case if something went wrong we just told like it. We, yeah. we we had some case when we didn't tell like right away and it was bad. And then like, for example, I've learned from that experience and I understood that if something goes wrong, like I just need to tell you, we just like work on that and done next yeah, next ne tough. Yeah, next yeah. tough next task. task. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. don't start like in that uh, statement when you, like you just do fast and you trust yeah. each other like okay this is what's like wrong we learn from that next time like we do differently we like how yeah. it works for both of us it was really yeah. fun because um, i can recall then <laughs> when we had like a really uh, tough month when we we're working barely sleeping always in the gallery preparing um like losing control uh, <laughs> finding it again and <laughs> after exhibition like three days, no calls, no <laughs> Daria, <laughs> no Irina, nothing. Just don't call me. <laughs> and it, it, it's actually helped. It's a good advice. Just, you know, step back. Step <laughs> back, yeah. After step back from there. Yeah, yeah. Just breathe and continue to work. So it was really good idea to have some those vacations after huge um, exhibitions. Yeah, and being like being a boss on your business, right? You can manage when it's comfortable for you to have this break. Yeah. So you can I agree. build your business 
around also your life schedule also so yeah. we've been good managing like for example if you know i have like a busy time like with my other part-time projects like we, we could give each other some pause and mm -hmm. we just can come back later like that's also i think yeah yeah well, yeah so cool. yeah but actually uh i think for me also important was to set up some like um like w we've been sometimes it can be also dangerous because you could chat a lot like about personal stuff and then like okay <laughs> like, like small business yeah. but also just to set up time when we just talk business right yeah like all other things later <laughs> like this is also like scheduling your time around like and to schedule your time during yeah it, it, it is true it's it's very important to just be uh, uh be right in time and d i mean it, it, it's business we, we we decided to do that and it's actually it's not that no it, it was fun i was uh, just thinking no it it's not that fun, fun. <laughs> no it was really cool because when you love something when you, and you do it with with your whole heart with uh, so it's you are even you it's okay, it's okay to work uh, during the night. <laughs> during night, during, <laughs> yeah, weekends, during yeah. weekends, yeah. So it's it's totally fine. And I really I do not remember when I was. No, I remember that I was so tired, and I just cried, just cried in the park, you know, in my back home. And I was like thinking, why I'm crying? Everything is fine. I mean, we're just working. And You're then just I just working, yeah. yeah. And then it says, ah, problem, just tired. I, you know, I'm more overwhelming all the time. So, and um, this this was actually for me the hardest part to just stop doing something because you know when some artist calling you during the I don't know night time or they're sending you messages, it, and it just because it's your business, you're just responding at the same time, which oh. is to totally <laughs> not normal. Um, yeah, so this is was a kind of like a mistake which I would never do again, but I cannot, so <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> oh, when the artist send you the artwork on a public transport, uh, and yeah. then we've been riding around like catching the bus, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> with it expensive happened. 10,000, like whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so but yeah, there have been so many accidents has happened, but it's still it's yeah. it's part of life, and we I think w with uh, before. Um, before pandemic started, we did a very successful uh, project because I, I really, I can't even remember. I, I used to remember when everybody is saying, if you are a gallery, you're going to be uh, closed in one year because like 90% of galleries are they are closing after one year didn't happen with us we just started and we were really like we got a physical space yeah. actually yeah and then we got or uh, participated in our art fair which yeah. was the first step to art yeah. in the future <laughs> whatever like yeah but then pandemic started actually yes. and we decided to close the space because like pandemic black life matter during this like period mm -hmm. like lots of uh riots around our area and lots of like violence came up it just yeah. like happened very fast and so unexpected you unexpected know? Yeah. yeah and i remember when uh i took like those all artworks we closed the space because it was dangerous to stay just like there because yeah. just like some riots uh yeah been in this area at that time and then and actually, the first half a year uh, in pan during pan w w after pandemic started, it was really hard to understand what's going on. Because actually, yeah. I was thinking that I, like every day when pandemic just started, I was thinking that I'm gonna die today. So literally, oh so and who cares about art? <laughs> I mean, I'm still care, <laughs> but it was really, really scary. So and then like probably during the second. Um, half a year we uh, I, I mean still new york were closed it was closed yeah it was just was closed. closed yeah i mean right now we Everything are i'm closed. just updating yeah digitally we are presented digitally and we're yeah. looking for uh, other mediums like maybe to be presented in the metaverse or other spaces yeah. we'll yeah. see how it will go but yeah it's still kind of like right now on hold <laughs> I've tried the new skincare brand Juvenal Skin and here's some products which I've tried and which were amazing. Actually, I will highlight two of them. This is Juvenal All-in-One Premium Serum and Juvenal 
Miracle Brightening Serum. So, but first of all, I'd love to mention that the uniqueness of that brand is that all of their products use probiotic fermented ingredients and have a clinical background, which I really love. So, for example, all-in-one premium serum. It contains the blend of 16 types of probiotic fermentation substances and it deeply hydrates my skin. I love that it's highly moisturizing and non-sticky. Miracle Brightening Serum, actually I applied it before my makeup and it works as a primer before my makeup because it makes my skin so smooth and it's so easy to apply any makeup products after that. It's just amazing. So yeah, uh, this Miracle Brightening Serum helps a lot before makeup. This I apply before I go into sleep, but you can actually mix, mix and match that, whatever works for you. So the medical grade and high concentration formula in Juvenus Probiotic products features ample natural small molecule and antibacterial peptides. This gently and deeply penetrate the skin's bottom layer this injects energy into cells, increases microcirculation, and boosts the skin's vitality. This helps counter dryness while improving the skin's ability to fight against allergies. Works amazing for my sensitive skin, and I highly recommend if you have that, please. What happened next with you? With uh, um, how pandemic or uh, else influenced your future, so uh, career decision. So Orchard Gallery, we're still working on it, as you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we uh, we are we're not doing um, any exhibitions, but we are working with artists, and we are uh, trying to find the best way to. Um, reach metaverse and to uh, publish our artists as nft artists and as a gallery because i still think this is important for artists um even if it's that the um the old blockchain is not kind of like the same situation with uh, money and transferring but i still i believe that this is better for artists to present them th themselves and their artworks uh with the gallery because you can trust the gallery and especially now when you are known artists for example and you are emerging artists or you are young artists mm, yeah so um yeah, it's important to be present yeah it, it is so it's kind of like your your trust your trust some someone because sometimes you know i um speak I mm, actually it's a quite interesting theme so uh speaking about nft i do not um sometimes i just do not want to buy some famous artist actually still i'm in an art field i'm buying something from who i can trust who is already have the reputation even if it's um even if it's a known artist or it's just a new artist and or it's just a designer who never been an artist who just worked in a production uh, field um, and who dis decided to make some I don't know 3d uh, imaging or yeah. something some like art. that so um, being our ar nft artist uh, now with a gallery is much better especially you know I, I was actually thinking about that as well from the legal side because what what we why artists are going to gallery right because we are doing all legal stuff yeah taxes they do the, like with the, all agreements disclosures marketing, <laughs> marketing as well, as yeah. well yeah PR so marketing. this is that's what gallery will do so that's uh what we are studying now because we are new in this field yeah, Metaverse is just like web free, like NFC yeah. just starting. And so actually I have a positive approach to that. I, I see that's the future and we should go that direction. Yeah. And I understand agree. Would you agree with that. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Definitely agree. So uh, during that time when we are um, working on our uh, new website and our uh, new opportunities, I mean, we're studying and learning, I'm found a really quite interesting job because I st during pandemic I start to uh, study yeah, it's yeah. All about that. yeah I'm, What's I'm your focus yeah, yeah I'm getting um, my master degree 
uh, in art business field. It's in St. Petersburg because it was such a good opportunity at the same time. So things got we have some positive things from pandemic. We can study, you know, from yeah. now from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And um, um, after I decided to start start uh, study there, I was thinking to actually find something which could bring me to a next level of like challenging with my life, with my career. And I found a um, company, it's called Art Discovery. Uh, we are doing art research and analysis of uh, unknown, <laughs> unknown, unknown art pieces. Yeah, kind of mm -hmm. like that. So, and we do a chemical research and also the imaging research, which is such a, sometimes such a wonderful experience. I sometimes I cannot even imagine that, you know, you do when you're doing it, I cannot uh, tell more, <laughs> I mean, that much, but we do x-rays or uh, we are doing yeah, some infrared. corporate policy, we don't, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I'm not talking mm -hmm. about my, our clients, but mm -hmm. I'm just explaining yeah, yeah, wha what we are doing, the process, yes. And, um, it's quite interesting because um, it's so weird, you know, when you are just doing some um, routine job at your uh, in your laboratory, and then you are just going home like, oh, what just happened? So probably <laughs> this could be Da Vinci. Was <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well. I just had work in yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? What's going on? Million so dollars piece. Yeah, of art, and yeah. now my vision of so be before I used to you know work as a curator, which helped me, and I studied a lot how to create an exhibition, how to see the space, how to bring people there, how the viewer who is visiting our gallery can see the painting and. Um, from like which it. angle yes. is better. In, enjoy it and yeah. probably maybe buy it or because it's Hopefully. your, it's, it's the, yeah, it's <laughs> actually yours. <laughs> I was, as you remember, I was actually was always on the art um, artist side and I'm like, let's just show. And then, no, let's sell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was good uh, the collaboration. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> and uh, at the same time now I'm. So after this part of my career, I start the completely different side. So now I'm from behind the frame of painting or from I'm inside the sculpture, which is really interesting because now when I'm going to my lovely uh, Metropolitan Museum, mm -hmm. I see more dust than, you <laughs> than I used to see before. <laughs> Wow, yeah. Like so yeah, it's somewhere because I, I look pretty close <laughs> on this painting. Yeah, actually, it's interesting uh, speaking about mm, contemporary art, uh, contemporary art artists, right? Yeah. And or more classic artists. Yeah. Like, and some contemporary ar artists, they kind of skip the instu um, institutional representation. They kind of skip that step, some sometime like the gallery step, right? But they have tons of followers. They have fans. They do like NFT. They do street art, like graffiti, and they get popular from yeah. that. What do you think? Is it the new reality for artists today, or you feel upset that right now, like, like it's changing like that in that direction? Hmm. Can the artist it's his it's own like entrepreneur as well and uh, doing? Things? Why not? I'm 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 okay with with this part I just like a gallery as an opportunity as an institution because gallery uh, usually if you are really really famous artist by yourself with no representative um, probably some art fairs can take you on their uh, art fairs like during mm -hmm. the event on Art Basel for example but if you are not that much so nobody will take you they all present most of them present the galleries so galleries so that's why um i think gallery it's a legal um it's kind of like co covered the all legal legal steps for artists and if you would like to be um 
if, if I would be a collector and I want to invest in the artist, I would probably go to the gallery mm -hmm. just because gallery will take a look on, on this. Th this is their mm -hmm. part as well. So sell and uh, and present. Um, so you think it's really beneficial for artists to be presented with a gallery? I think so, yeah. but it's 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 fine if the if someone. I mean, it's a lot of actually artists who is doing just by themselves, but, but yeah. usually they, they would like to um, to show their artworks everywhere. And this is benefit from gallery as well, because gallery takes sometimes um, all expenses for traveling to, to, to exchanging, you know, exhibitions. So, and um, not a lot of, especially emerging artists, they contemporary emerging, of course, they're always they contemporary. So um, not all emerging artists has their place where everybody can just, you know, take a look and see what they draw in. So um, I still, when I, you know, remember when I did the, um, the review, usually before this exhibition when I need to pick up someone for uh, Yeah, for you actually you yeah. did review for artists, yeah? Yes, and, uh, I did to their studios because what they're, s for example, selling me with uh, emails, it's not completely not the same what so I saw there. So you need to come there. and see the artwork yeah. in some space and like it's better if it's gallery, but at least as a curator, you come to the studio and yeah, then you can make a decision. But, but that it. works only with the uh, new artists usually, because if you, s you know, sometimes you can just, with a huge, um, um, with a huge auction houses, mm -hmm. you just can buy uh, via the phone and just with the name of the artist, so you don't even think about what's about the piece of art. So yeah, big yeah. names. Yeah, yeah, of course, you go to artsu.com and uh, yeah, yeah, and that's you can it. find the big so names, and it's some way to invest. Actually, you've been working also with portfolio. Like review. Yeah. Like resume. Yes. Yeah, reviews CV. for artists. What were the common mistakes artists did in their portfolio? What, what like did you mention during? I'm smiling because sometimes they don't have CV. Okay. <laughs> so really? so they're coming. Yes, they're coming. Um, they see that I can make a portfolio review, and um, usually it requests CV, uh, which means your bio, which means your. Um, wha wha what you're studying, wha wha where you're studying, like what happened with your life, and uh, also uh, where you had uh, exhibitions. And sometimes they do not have even this piece of paper. Wow. So, and they're just sending me pictures and, okay. like, look. Yeah, look and like and with, with this also. Yeah, and I'm always smiling and I'm asking, okay, so could you please just send me a PDF file wi with all this information? And sometimes they are. Uh, I help them on this side. So I'm literally, they asking me for, could you help me with CV? Cause I don't have it. Yeah. Or it's maybe a mm, kind of like they're doing their mistakes. So, and um, yeah, but, but this is the common, very okay. common mistake. Yeah. Um, the second part is how they- So first have CV please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And the, the s second one, I guess it's just, it's how they, uh, they introduce themselves, even with uh, emails. Uh, they just send in pictures on a, I don't know, on a Dropbox or, or mm -hmm. it's it's not the way how people contact. I pr we had a lot of those emails, and sometimes I just delete all them because I cannot read. I cannot even see the pictures. So how they complete this? Um, these all messages all together it's just like you know send me some uh, they did they, they, some of them send me um, screenshots from their phones with a p in it's not very professional, not very professional. yeah so um, and I was feeling that okay so maybe you are very talented but you have to be organized as well <laughs> you have to organize your talent <laughs> or you can just ask and there is a lot of people and me as well who can help you. Do you feel that online presence is helpful like to have a website, to have uh, some social media if it is what? Yeah, I think it's matter? uh it's your business card. So just online business card. Yes, today, it's yeah. online business mm -hmm. card. That's how because 
there is f especially for a gallery for um, it's it's hard to remember you know there is when you see especially now instagram nfts i don't know some a lot we have so many advertising in our phones it's really hard to remember all images what you see during the day and that's why it's very important to just send the right portfolio to a curator to be presented and the second actually part uh, not the second but the ma one of the main uh, mistake of uh, artists when they just you know they see the open call or uh, they do not do they some of them do not do research and they just send in just random galleries to just be presented which mm -hmm. is not correct at all for for example you are you have a gallery who is selling sculptures and I keep s t sending you my watercolor prints or mm -hmm. watercolor yeah. paintings, so which is not, <laughs> which is, <laughs> yeah, we just have time, d yeah, yeah, different require. That's it. Yeah. So they have to read a lot as well. They have to make a research mm -hmm. wh where and to whom they sell, s uh, s send in their um, yeah, that's portfolios. A good yeah. That's a good advice. What do you feel, um, so today about speaking about like, digital presence right like online presence artists have to be presented there mm -hmm. like to have a website probably ready right, to have some instagram or yeah probably maybe linkedin but i don't i'm not sure that that works like probably instagram right that will be the best for artists yes instagram is it's fine and yeah. you can promote over there and you can sell them by by yourself but still um remember we d we didn't have uh exclusive contracts with our artists yeah so that. some of galleries they do mm -hmm. so that's why I sometimes if you are presented in a with a gallery or by, by a gallery so um it's better not to share that you are selling so or it's it's, it's a moving on actually so but at least you have to show something that you are doing you're working because this is how people see the potential because mm -hmm. now it's really hard to buy an artist who is for in for in investment. So if I'm buying now some artist who is just not showing how he's working and I just like his um, work or his way how he see the world, it doesn't. So probably I'm I'm just buying because I appreciate it. So you just I like it. Yeah, I just, just like an su artwork, su yeah. support this artist but if i'd like to buy an artist some people not an artist but Ar um, artwork artworks, like artworks yeah i would like to know that this artist is going to be an artist in the 10 years as well so actually for that purpose probably if you look from the cu customer perspective and if you're looking for some art to buy invest to art yeah and you hope that in the future yeah if it's an, uh, not big name artist, probably it's even the better strategy because p probably when you just start investing, you don't have money to invest to like basket or, or, yeah. or if it's just like some partial piece of investment. Yeah. Uh, so you probably are looking for, uh, looking for small establishing artists, which you hope in like 10, 20 years will be big and you can sell this piece mm -hmm. of art uh, for the very big price. So. Is there any guideline to the customer who is looking for that, what he should pay attention to? Um, I think, first of all, it's to start, it just visit some art fairs. There, it's a, with a, yeah, it's a, it's a good opportunity to, to see the new artists who, who really, because art fair is where people buy. So, and just see what's going on on the market and do not buy right away. So if, if, if you really like it, please. But if you really want to invest, trust to make a research first. And I believe actually, if you'd like to collect some art, you, first of all, you have to learn a lot as well. Because you, or use the art, art advisor. advisor. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. um, it's very important. Uh, for especially f f if you would like to buy someone maybe mm, new 
So someone really young artist or young, I mean, when I'm talking about young artists, it's just artists who could be 60 or 70 or 90 or 100 years old, they're just who just started, young artists. So yes, yeah. actually interesting yeah, yeah. Point, yeah. yeah, so, um, so kind of like unknown artist, right? Yeah. Um, then I think, mm, you know, I think in art field is kind of like always, we can find there as well as in the fashion some trendy some tra trendy artists so which is really really I interesting yeah what would you say to the person who's who, who is telling oh just four years old kid could do the same and why why i should um, like you know it's very common thing that people think sometimes it's too compli too, 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 too simple you know it's just like why this artwork costs so much money like um there is a lot of reasons but um i mean how, how people can react on their um art piece but uh, <laughs> actually i tried by myself to, to do something and i couldn't so I couldn't. <laughs> yeah <laughs> just i just sit and do it yeah i just was thinking <laughs> that i'm gonna go buy some um art materials and then i just create the artwork i saw so many in <laughs> chelsea and they pr they look very but you know, not that hard to do it. And then I tried, no, I cannot. I, I know nothing about how to create art because you are studying for that. So that's why I have to see the CV first, <laughs> even if you don't have the, um, if, you, if you don't have education. But um, I, I'm, yeah, okay, kid can do that. Let's, p please, he's probably a very talented artist. <laughs> Let him do that. <laughs> Yeah. So, but no, it's it's just a stereotype, I guess. So yeah. it's, th you know, it's kind of like a lot of layers over there. So just not, it's not just because it's simple. It's something else. It's because it's touching you. It's because you're feeling it. It's kind of reflecting your feelings as well. Or it's uh, could be um, kind of like, not kind of, yeah, contra controversial with, with your thoughts. So it's always you are speaking with the art piece. So if kid can mm -hmm. do that, that's a wonderful kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Actually, I just was thinking about your previous question. What do you think about lots of uh, artworks which are copycats? I ca I, it's just very roughly, right? Like with the same style, which replicate each other. And I thought like from the business perspective, if you are only in the gallery, you want to sell pieces which you can make money on. I yeah. mean, looking at this thing from two different perspective, as a businessman, I will probably pay attention to those artwork. If I see that people love it, that people buy it, like who cares, right? You're making You're money. making money. Yeah. yeah, from other side, you can also have the idea you want to um, uh, keep c the concept, right? You want to be very clear that you have the specific style, you promote the specific artists and specific artworks. And this is also like when we uh, speak about art, when we go to art fairs, sometimes we see uh, artworks which selling good, yeah, and but they're all like the same, like you go from art fair to art fair and you see the same like style. Yeah. But sometimes you see like very unique piece, yeah, and this is what catch your eyes. Yeah, and, and, it, uh, and it could be no name space, as well. Like it yeah, can be so no, like we've been yeah. with you like so many times and we like saw some just artist who is like at the angle, no one see him, but his artwork just pops up from yeah. the, the majority, right? Yeah. And it's, well it's a agree. great thing. And you know, uh, this is was the, for us, it's we, we used to learn a lot, I, I think, from the, this part as well. So because we, when we start gallery, we didn't know what to sell. We just remember yeah. our first exhibition. Uh, we were just. I like that. I like that. I yeah, I like everything. <laughs> I do not know what yeah. what to do with all those artworks, and as I remember that we actually were tried to sell all of them. We changed our layout of s space every two weeks because we really wanted to see what is sell because we we would like to be successful gallery and we totally understand that some pieces are can sell like pies and some cannot, but at least we would like to present the satyrs because maybe someone, because it's touching us as well. So it was- Like Maria Rosenberg, you remember yeah. like how many sold? It's just like, it's yeah. like street style bus 
last yes. year, like, yeah. like, but it's just like it right was. now, it's, it's it's a very cool thing, and uh, she she was like that, right? Yeah, I, I free artworks. <laughs> yeah, I remember someone <laughs> like, just stopped by and bought her all three. Yeah, artworks, like all yeah. her outfits. So it, it's it's kind of trendy right now, right? But she's probably not unique in that style. But whatever she does, she has yeah. her audience and people who love it and who want to see that in their bedroom or yeah. like living room, right? Yeah. Yeah, and maybe I'm actually, I hope she will be uh, popular in uh, well, like many years. <laughs> yeah, I wish a lot of uh, yeah. success to uh, all artists we are represented there. Yeah. Actually, do you collect art by yourself? Not yet. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I, th I feel, because, you know, from my perspective, I work in so serious company now. Okay. And um, I have orchard and we have their our artists and um it's you know it's when you have a gallery it's hard to collect because <laughs> because it's kind of like you have um your artwork sometimes at home yeah, yeah so but it doesn't mean that they're on the wall it just it just feel different because you're always uh, working on it, um, you're braining it. Yeah, it's sometimes not a fancy part. It's not but a fancy. Yeah, <laughs> but now I'm very interested in NFT. So that's w I think for me it's very. I, I I feel more they are comfortable to buy this part. And actually, not kidding, but um, you have your own NFT. Yeah, yeah, mm. I do have. Yes, you yes, you yes. I, right? I bought. I bought. I'm still, but market now is down so we're yeah. still waiting but i'm still um, i believe in this i believe in metaverse and i think this is very good opportunity now to just be involved in um this digital market as much as we can be involved because uh, it's going to be huge <laughs> yes. so if we can start now that's the best day <laughs> if you did not so yeah, yeah i agree with you actually speaking about collecting art or working with art which topics you feel attached to like i mean artists there are there are so many different artists and there are some time creating the art which is reflecting the current time we are living in yeah and it can be some social topics it can be some personal right relationship mm -hmm. like or just some vision of their some vision yeah what yeah. um what do you like right now? Like what the art, what artists are doing right now, and what do you feel attached to? Mm. Some current, you know. Like I believe it was pandemic. It was a big thing. I believe like a lot of lo lots of artists they've been reflecting on that. Yeah. And uh, I think it's it's happening with the whole world actually, as you can see that Gym. we are all thinking now about where we are and who we are, and I think artists now they feel more kind of kind of like confident on that because it I mean it used to be that that it's something happening in the world and you just create in this whole battlefield you know <laughs> what happened you you like write in the story about something but I believe now people are looking inside themselves and they're just trying to reflect what they're feeling and that's why I really enjoy um, any artist who truly believe in their own perspective j just not because I I feel that this is popular or I feel it's just uh, super cool or I think blue one sells better like blue colors or, or <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, just uh, or s no I think the, the the idea is always uh, truly believe idea is always good s selling in uh, what they are trying to to express themselves but uh, I think n now people are more curious especially after pandemic they're curious about their lives and they're curious about what's happening in the world they're more mm, how I can say that they more aware aware yes and they they feel that they're part of this world so they are literally looking around not for the topic but for the problem and which is really good like social justice uh, yes. ecological eco ecology right yeah uh, some uh, wor worse yes happening yes. in the world yeah and I actually I recently have been um, in Fotografiska and uh, 
yeah, Black Lives Matter, the, like the whole floor right now, uh, about uh, catastrophes yeah. like 9-11, uh, like uh, Ukraine and other Afghanistan, like lots yeah. of artworks is, are about that. I was so impressed because our it, it was not something j just for entertainment or just for the visual part. It was all about social issues and what the world is going on right now. Like you are really living in in very interesting world right now because yeah, we have internet for a long time already, but now when you when you have s like s you know something happened in Japan right now, you can get this uh, from Twitter one second later. So s t t any information, and it's pretty quick. So that's why I believe that artists now they are try to look and try to find exact what th what bothering themselves. Uh, and uh, I agree with you that a lot of now it's the world is uh, completely. In I think fr frustrating, yeah, and they, they just we we're just looking w how we can be helpful or how we can, you know, um, bright up some problems. So and and just to show um, about some some to look to this world for the eyes of like victims of this crisis or to yeah. feel empathy and I think we're all in crisis like mm -hmm. just in general the whole generation in crisis mm -hmm. in different types of crisis different, uh, different yeah. issues yeah yeah mm -hmm. and actually crisis. for now I cannot you know even say that I'm going to for example to, s s to, to the galleries they all have different different artists who is really not um, doing just one theme they're all thinking about some s something but yeah. I remember after actually pan uh, not, um, it's not after pandemic is still happening but uh, after this w waves uh th they were like it was second third fourth and then um we had a lot of um pieces in galleries um with like during pandemic, during pandemic, mm -hmm. and they're completely different. Mm -hmm. So artists before, and artists during, and artists now, they they did something something else. The context is very important. Yeah, when the artist is creating something, yeah, and I'm feeling also when I'm right now, like if I'm learning about art, and um, yeah, I'm trying to get into the context of this period when the artist have been creating this artwork, and it really gives me much more insights. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, what would you advise to uh, people today who want to build Korean arts and who'd love to succeed in that field? For artists or for collectors or for? Actually, for people who would love to build a career as an uh, art creator and art advisor. Uh, so just read a lot of books and watch watch a lot of art just y you Which have watch? to see the world through their artist's eyes you just have to do that so it's very important to see different types and I it's m and never judge <laughs> never judge because uh, um this is this is the way how people see what they're doing and or saw before so it's very interesting and if you like something which were which uh, from the artist who is not like living right now just read his story this is why biography is very important where this artist came from what his problem because <laughs> we all have those problems different types of problems but artists they they it's really it's our eyes to our world, so that's how we see. And it will stay forever, some, some art pieces will stay forever. This is how yeah. next generation will judge about yeah. and will learn, yeah. yeah. And um, oh, yeah, I was thinking amazing. about, you know, to what to maybe um, to recommend to read. Um, Books, podcasts. You know, it's so many. I, I literally, I stuck it in, in, in my house in front of the bookshelves and i have so i know you have lots of yeah. art books so yeah. it's really hard to tell but i would start to actually explain wh with um, where we live and it's marshall McLuhan. he's not 
an artist, he is not his philosopher. So just start to read about where you live and then maybe <laughs> you'll find the right answer which art you like or how to be an artist or what career with an art you should take yeah, as an adventure. Yeah, what yeah. are you inspired today about your future projects? Like, um, what are you inspired to work on in the f your... In future? Yeah. Oh, uh, there is, I'm so happy that I'm in New York and I'm so happy there is uh, so many opportunities to, to do something in the art field. And now I think my, it's hard to tell because you know, you never know. You really That's never know. Maybe today we'll, after this interview, we'll go with you somewhere and we decide to open a m new metaverse <laughs> <laughs> company. Uh, this is a common, this is a common yeah, opportunity. So yeah. But I think so. for me, I picked the right career for myself because um, I really love to study and it doesn't matter for me if it's a business part or it's a sci science part or it's a curational part or it's a talking part or it's a social media part. It's always interesting. Um, but I really do want to understand how the, the scientific part work and how to so to, to just learn how to identificate the art from whole uh, from whole levels from all levels and of course I would like to uh, see a, a gallery again like mm. with open doors mm. it, yeah so see, yeah, that's yeah. so I, I wish um, yeah we'll open oh my again yeah, yeah. That, that's <laughs> what <laughs> your thoughts I mean I'll, I would love to it's just amazing project and we created so many like we built some following, we established relations with artists, yeah. and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the future for Metaverse, definitely. Uh, if our physical space, physical gallery space will make sense, of course, that will be uh, also an opportunity yeah, I to think go so. with uh, other projects. I like actually that you're right now uh, focusing more deep on their um, artistic side, like you get education, you learn like in art discovery, it just makes your experience more rich and you can bring like lots of ideas to your next projects. And it's uh, like, I really appreciate like working like on different projects at the same time. And you with a startup, yeah. And you, if you have some nine to five job uh, or like part-time job, you can r rely like on financial parts. So you can do your side projects more mm -hmm. like and feeling like you do D Dice Cream also right. magazine, right? And uh, yeah. you can do those different things and try and see what works. But an amazing thing that you focused on art, you know? That's yeah, art. this is actually, s I, I, uh, I really love it. So, and I wish every person would have this such a passion, such a yeah. passion with something, yeah, to just, yeah. to just do it just because you, you do not know what to do. The, the you know, from the side, so <laughs> just you do that. That's yeah. it. What's your definition of success? Definition of success. It's mm. <laughs> my favorite question. At the end. Just wake up in the morning and smile to yourself. That's it. So, and everything is going to be all right. <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Ira, how we can give some is how people can find you mm. what's the best way it's we will leave uh, i r a i r a dot me in instagram and it's it's my website as well mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thank you so much thank you it, it was, was fun so conversation it's just so quick <laughs> unbelievable yeah yeah, yeah it was really cool thank you very much thank i you wish so to continue <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope we will have another conversation yeah. maybe later yeah, yeah with some updates with your career and yours yeah. and i hope you'll have a lot of many different <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> yeah. and i hope we'll maybe i don't know it's just such a busy time maybe we'll go to some art fairs this season i'm not sure but I will look yeah. it for uh, your Instagram if you right. do. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. show you some. <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you. Thank and you. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. So subscribe to our YouTube, no, drop questions, Instagram. Yeah, and see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>